Hey, I'm Sam and welcome back to Dungeon Brews, the show where I desperately shoehorn my favourite things from video games, movies and TV shows into my favourite TTRPG, Dungeons and Dragons 5th Edition. Please don't hurt me. This week I've been playing a lot of Tiny Tina's Wonderlands, which has got me thinking about an issue I tend to come across in D&D, and that's comedic characters. Now, if you've ever had the displeasure of watching me play, you'll see that I'm quite keen on chaotic comedy. But there is definitely a really fine line between a genuinely funny character and an annoyance for the party. Between comedy and silliness, and I guess between getting your party to laugh and have fun and ruining that fun for everyone. Now, Borderlands is hardly highbrow comedy. In fact, I would argue it is very far from it. But there are a few things we can learn from Borderlands with regards to the construction of comedic characters. And then a few tips that I'm going to share uh, with regards to actually playing those comedic characters and making your party enjoy their presence rather than just deeply resenting you. So, time for a brew. With regards to making any comedic character, the first and most important thing is concept formation. Now, a lot of the time when you see discourse around um, joke characters online, it, it tends to be that someone has thought of something like a bacon wizard or a swordsman. Now, these can seem funny on paper and generally I would say they are. But if you want to play in a 40 part campaign or even a four hour one shot, a lot of these jokes will wear thin quite quickly because they're gimmicks rather than actually subverting any expectations that you might have about tabletop role playing or, or fantasy stories in general. In order to make a character who will be consistently funny, you need to think of a character as a joke. And all jokes consist of two parts, even memes. Okay. That being a setup and a punchline. Now with regards to char a character, we can look across funny games like Borderlands, we can look to our favourite sitcoms like Not Space Force and we can see that all of the most genuinely clever comedic characters tend to be based on a very normal stereotype. For example, Michael Scott from The Office for the most part is everyone's boss. Michael Bluth from Arrested Development is an overly attached single dad. The setup there is something fundamentally relatable but what generates humour from that is the deconstruction of that normality for the sake of a punchline. It's highly unlikely that your boss at the paper factory is going to come in and roll around the furniture. Your overly attached dad isn't going to come and live with you in your college dorm in the final part of your senior year. These are absurd situations. But as a result of the overinflation of stereotype and providing these fundamentally normal characters with weird and absurd quirks. To put it another way, a bard who spends all day boot scooting around on the floor screaming at the top of his lungs because he has wizard worms might seem like an absurd premise and perhaps cause you to laugh the first time purely due to the absurdity of it, but the joke will get very old very quickly. But if we take something fundamentally more normal, so for example, a gunslinger fighter, we can begin to look at the stereotypes of what a gunslinger would be like. We can start looking at Wild West movies. And in fact, if we just make that character obsessed with cowboy tropes, we can generate a lot of humour by putting a cowboy in strange situations. That still lacks a quirk, but how about we make this character slightly neurotic? perhaps obsessed with beans. So that's one option. You can overemphasize stereotypes. Obviously it goes without saying that these shouldn't be real world stereotypes. There is no comedy to be found in punching down on people. But yeah, a second option is to counteract stereotypes and counter them really, really hard. So for example, if you think of goblins, you think of tiny green people stealing cash from uh, travellers on the road and eating rats and mud. What about if we flip that on its head and generate a goblin shunned by its tribe for enjoying haute cuisine? At that point, every single situation you put that goblin into, it's going to operate in a fashion which is completely unexpected and that generally is what generates comedy. The essence of these two approaches is that when you're trying to make something which will be funny over the course of a very long period of time, you don't want the character itself to be a joke. Jokes get old when they're overplayed. You want what the character does to be a joke because that joke can consistently be called back to, be reiterated on, be manipulated in different situations such that you can squeeze out lots and lots of funnies from going about the character's day-to-day -day life. Now, when it comes to D&D, if we want to level up on top of that, you want a character to provide comic relief but not in and of themselves be comic relief. Now, once you have a concept which you yourself are going to enjoy, you hope the other players around the table are going to enjoy, the next crucial thing to do is to ensure that your character isn't just there to generate jokes. You need to provide a character utility and actually this is an opportunity for making 
even more gags happen. You can extend your concept into gameplay. So the first example I mentioned, this gunslinger playing on cowboy tropes, that is a character I played as a beaver gunslinger called Clint Eatswood. Now he could have just been a rootin' tootin' shootin' bean eating cowboy, but it was important to me to provide that character with utility which operated and functioned as a joke. So my favorite magic item in D&D 5th edition, the decanter of endless water, I asked the DM kindly if I could reskin it as a decanter of endless beans. And what this did was it emphasized two things. One, this cowboy's absurd obsession with beans, a traditional cowboy snack. Two, the complete neuroticism of this character, the fact that they were constantly covered in beans and could make them at will. And three, provided them with a tool which actually functioned quite effectively, a utility item which does damage and also can push enemies away. What you want to do when you're making any character is to ensure that every item they have is an item that they would genuinely care about having. That every feat that you provide them with all of their equipment adds to the character. And this is regardless of whether you're making a comedy character or not. But for the sake of comedy, a really easy way to generate laughs is actually to use the rules of the game to completely commit to your character. Now this ties into the next large section, which in my eyes is playing the concept. The first thing to note here is that you don't have to constantly be sharking out jokes. Much like normal improv comedy, the most important things to do here are to commit to the bit, not constantly seek out jokes when there aren't any, and accept that your jokes don't have to be completely hilarious. As long as they're on character and not detracting from everything else that's happening, within the story. You do not and should not be chaotic for chaos's sake. If you just sit there, you wait and you play, and you play in character, the setups will come and you'll be able to deliver perfect punchlines. Patience is key here. And that levels into a second thing, and that's that you need to provide other players space. No one wants to hear a series of puns for four hours. What you need is to give everyone space to breathe so that they can play their characters, they can roleplay effectively, and that they have the space to generate setups for you for you to pounce on as punchlines. Crucially, never shout or talk over other players for the sake of a laugh. Wait patiently for gaps because even if it was going to be the perfect punchline, an opportunity will come again in the future. Now, to make being patient easier, I find it's very useful to pad out a concept uh, with something other than just the core joke and the core premise. Generate a character as you normally would with a traditional normal backstory and have the jokey facets of the character sit on top of that. This is why you'll find more success with the character who makes jokes rather than the character who is a joke. And finally, my recommendation for when to actually make jokes is to always think, would it be reasonable for a living, breathing, functional individual to think this at this time? Now, that's not to say that when situations are bleak that you shouldn't be sat there trying to make the the situation lighter. Plenty of people who are dying or have relatives who have died try to make themselves and those around them feel better by cracking a couple of one-liners. What I mean is if another character has just found out that someone they know has died, you're probably not going to be sat there trying to make jokes about beans at their expense. So really my guide to doing comedy in D&D breaks down into three things. The first is generating a character concept which isn't in and of itself a joke, but has quirks which flip your expectations for how someone would, would behave in a certain situation. The the second is to use the rules of the game to build up on those quirks and allow you to commit better to the bit such that it doesn't feel like you're jumping between two characters, a functional and completely non-functional individual. And the third is to just be incredibly patient to wait for setups and deliver punchlines on them when those setups are actually genuinely available and won't negatively impact everyone else in your game. And really that is all there is to it. If you want more tips on how to build great characters and play them better, as well as some pretty funky homebrew that you can stick onto your characters and into your games, don't forget to subscribe to Roll Together RPG and check out the other Dungeon Brews videos, which will be somewhere on the internet. I've been Sam, and I'll see you next time.